again, almost ready to start. And uh, today, as I anticipated, I would like to concentrate on exercises uh, rather than uh, moving forward with the lectures. And therefore, I see that some of you already have the PC. If you, if you have it, yes, please uh, take it out. And uh, if you don't have the PC, if you can, you can join, it will be perfect. Before I start, just a quick reminder of uh, our current situation. First of all, I would like to remind you that on Thursday we have the survey of your opinion. Again, please make an effort to, to attend because and to spread the voice. Uh, if you know colleagues that uh, stopped attending the lectures for any reason, which I would perfectly understand, if you can please ask them, even if they never attended, if you can please ask them to attend on Thursday. It is uh, important for, for all of us, for, for me in particular. And uh, I just would like to explain to you very briefly what is the reason why I am uh, interested in, in getting your opinion through the survey. As you know, I have already I have already uh, made available on IOL a survey for you, but this is something that some of you already completed, and I thank you very much for that. But this is uh, something that is collected by me, not by the university. The survey that is collected by the university is organized without any control by me, of course, and uh, it's, um, uh, it's collected with the purpose of uh, collecting data to support uh, the improvement uh, of uh, our teaching activities and the way it is used is that uh, in, uh, in particular the questions that are related to the overall organization of, uh, of the university and the programs uh, as you know the form you for sure you have already completed some of these forms there are some questions that are not related directly to the teacher these are related to the degree program, how it's organized, the rooms, uh, etc. These uh, are used, your response in these questions are used to support uh, the strategies uh, of the university for making uh, the best uh, facilities available for students. And you don't have to be concerned about uh, your critical opinion on these questions. If, uh, the, the questions that are not directly related to the teacher don't have any impact on the teacher and uh, therefore don't be concerned if you feel that uh, the room is not uh, optimal uh, the quality of the facilities, projector, etc. is not optimal don't be afraid to be critical absolutely it's uh, something that uh, I mean if you are happy of the teaching but not of the rooms uh, don't be afraid to be critical with respect to the questions related to the facilities. The questions that are related to the teacher are used in two ways. First, they are made available to the teacher, uh, to the teacher themselves. After, uh, I would say, six months, usually it was six months after collecting the survey, they promised this year that uh, they will make available the results before the end of the summer. But in any case, uh, with some months of delay in order to give you the opportunity to take the exam before the results are communicated to the teacher. I don't think this is really relevant, but in any case, it's a kind of, uh, of uh, um, privacy policy that the university wants to adopt. And, uh, and then the questions are used by the uni in order to get an overall idea of the quality of the teaching in degree programs and the individual quality of the teaching. The results are used in order to, uh, to support allocation of resources to degree programs and individually to the teacher. The way these, statistics, these results are used to support allocation of resources is through statistics. So it's not the individual question that matters, the individual reply that matters, of course, and not only the individual question, but uh, it's uh, an overall statistics that is computed that matters, and statistics are computed uh, to ensure robustness uh, of uh, 
the evaluation. This is a critical issue because, of course, uh, any evaluation procedure should be robust. If it's not robust, uh, it's not efficient. Robust meaning that uh, it gives uh, um, efficient assessment of the quality of the teaching. In order to reach robustness, an algorithm is applied which, first of all, uh, takes into consideration only the replies that are collected in group of students uh, higher or equal than 10. This is the reason why I am asking you to please make an effort to hear these 10 people, because otherwise the results are communicated to the teacher, but uh, they are not used uh, to support the university's strategies. There are several reasons for that. And uh, last but not least, the fact that uh, if, you, if you teach to a group of students that is very reduced, it's not representative of uh, the average situation that we have in the university. And then from uh, this pool of statistics, uh, the tails uh, are rejected. The tails meaning that if you are too kind with the teacher or if you are too critical with respect to the other students, uh, yeah, the opinion is rejected. This is why I'm uh, recommending students to try to be very objective in their evaluation because if you are objective, your opinion matters. If you are not objective, your opinion is uh, likely to be discarded. And uh, this happens in many situations uh, in the decision making. So my recommendation for you is just to be very frank, very objective in your evaluation. You don't need to be too kind, you don't need to be too critical if you want to be effective. Just try to report facts and uh, to be, uh, as I said, very, I mean, very transparent in your evaluation, which is, by the way, anonymous. There is no way for the uni to identify you because uh, the results are collected online and they are not associated. Okay, in the database they are associated to your name, but there is no way for any people working in the uni to uh, have access to your individual names. And uh, keep in mind that for elaborating these statistics, uh, only the front of the form is used, not the back. The back. Okay, now it's online, so you, it's uh, mean, meaningless to say front and back. Let's say that there are some questions where you reply in a closed form, in a fixed number of choices, like uh, definitely yes, uh, uh, yes and no, no and yes, definitely no. And these are used for statistics. And then there are some boxes in the form where you can put text, uh, and the text is not used for statistic assessment. And uh, the way text is used, I, I'll explain you in one minute. So, as I said, these statistics uh, computed on the questions uh, are, uh, are uh, used by the university and it is extremely important, I mean, that uh, I firmly believe uh, that this is a good strategy. It is extremely important to base uh, the strategies of the universities uh, and uh, individual strategies of teachers uh, on students' opinion. And this is why I say you have to express it. it it's like uh, casting your vote at the elections. If you don't cast your vote, you don't have any say on the politics. In the university, if you don't cast your opinion, even if you never attended a lecture, anyway, you have to take an exam. You have seen the material on the web, you have seen the material on IOL, etc. As I said, it's extremely important that you cast your opinion, because otherwise uh, there is no way for the university to, uh, to aim strategies basing on the student. Now, as I said, the, the results are communicated to the teacher. The way I use them is uh, uh, usually I don't, uh, I, I, first of all, I really need your feedback in, in this form because uh, it's a way for me to improve my teaching. And I, I, I tell you every year, this is something that I really do. So I, I look at the results of the students and I profit from their experience. What you have seen in my lectures this year is different with respect to last year because it was suggested by the students that uh, uh, a certain topic was not really interesting. Of course, I don't trust 100% the opinion of the students, but I take it into account. And, uh, and uh, other students suggested me, I really would like that you explain more about another subject and I take it into consideration. And uh, 
keep in mind that uh, the, what I'm particularly interested in is uh, the text in the boxes. Because uh, it's, uh, I am interested, of course, uh, in the statistics on uh, your level of satisfaction. But what I really am interested in is your suggestions, which is given in the text boxes. So take some time to put some text in the boxes, even if you're happy. I mean, if you have reasons for being happy in a very objective way, it's a good thing that you write it in the box, because so I get, I realize that you're happy with that. If you don't write anything, because some people say, OK, I am happy, so there is no need to write anything, because I only have to write if I am critical. This is not correct. You have to write what is your feeling in these boxes, and even if it's positive or and, uh, and uh, with probably more reasons if it's negative. So take some time. And uh, as I said, uh, keep in mind that the different uh, purpose of the two types of questions, statistics on the one hand, and message to the teacher on the other hand. The text in the box boxes is a message to the teacher. Doesn't have any impact on the statistics. The statistics have an impact uh, on the university strategies, uh, but the message to the teacher is weaker because, you know, okay, I like numbers, but what, it's, uh, what I really need is a specific uh, suggestion. So if you think that I am a good teacher but want to be critical with some parts, then the strategy is good uh, judgment in uh, the closed box uh, questions, closed answers questions, and maybe some criticism in the text. Conversely, if uh, you are critical and won't have an impact on me through the statistics, then you have to uh, address your reply in particular to the statistics and maybe explain in the text uh, what is uh, your feeling. And don't be, I mean, in, in this evaluation, you don't have to follow solidarity. You just have to be transparent and objective, okay? So no problem. If you, for some reason, you are concerned by the impact of your judgment on me, I tell you, this is not um, a concern that is uh, reasonable. Just forget about it. You have to be objective, OK? And uh, as I said, solidarity or cynic cynical attitudes don't have any effect, because uh, we recognize that. And uh, one last thing I wanted to say. The way statistics are computed, and it's good for you to know that, in, in the questions where only four alternatives are given, which are definitely no, no, no yes, yes, no, and definitely yes, they are grouped into two categories. Definitely no and no yes are grouped together where in computing statistics. The same thing for yes, no, and definitely yes, they are grouped together. So a positive answer is considered to be an answer that is given to yes, no, or yes, definitely. A negative answer is considered to be an answer uh, no or no, yes. Do you understand what I mean? Perfect. The extremes, definitely no, definitely yes, are only used, or let me say, definitely yes, is only used for special recognitions. Every year, the rector sends a letter to the best 30 or so professors in the university. It's just a letter. There is no price. There is no public recognition. It's a confidential letter. And in order to identify those 30 person, they look at the definitely yes answer. But this is something that is just for personal and confidential recognition. <coughs> Otherwise, they are grouped. So the, this is useful information for you. To, to know that definitely yes, only serve if you really would like to identify, I mean, something in comparison also with the other professor, just make a difference. But from a statistical point of view, it, it's not effective. What is effective is the two extremes and the two middle questions. Okay, I think that's it. Is everything is clear? Perfect. Because uh, I, I think it is important, and you know that there is a, a question in the form, uh, did the teacher explain to you uh, what is uh, the purpose of this questionnaire? So this is why I am explaining, but I also think that it's useful for you to know, to know how it's used. It is used indeed, okay? And in particular, I'm personally very interested in it. 
Okay, now let's go to another communication which is related to the fact that on Monday we cannot teach, you know that? Okay. And uh, so, first of all, what is the reason why I cannot teach? Because on, uh, on uh, Sunday there are the European elections which are extremely important and uh, I really hope that everybody takes the opportunity to vote because these elections are important also for education and research. This is why I'm not involved in politics at all, but I am involved in education and research and therefore I, I know that these European elections are important. There is no reason to explain why because it's clear. And, uh, and therefore, uh, you, you see that you have seen that on May 27 I got cancelled. Uh, so let's take three hours on May 31st and that's it. Because I don't think it's reasonable to go, to go on uh, next Monday, which is already June, and uh, I guess that you are busy with the uh, preparation of the exams. Uh, in order to reach 48 hours, I scheduled five hours in the field trip, which indeed is, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that's it, okay? Also, I, I took the, this decision not to go in June because I think that this year it was a bit uh, more efficient with respect to last year, so indeed, uh, I think we can complete the program in any way. Good, so we meet on Thursday, and there is the survey. We don't meet on Monday, and we need we meet the next Thursday. I will let you know the last Thursday, the last lecture, bring your PC. So I'm letting you know now, actually. Okay. Finally, today, what are we doing today? So let me show you. Today, I would like to uh, dedicate this exercise to pairwise comparison because I gave some thoughts to it and let me explain a little bit better. I introduced to you what is pairwise comparison and the analytic hierarchy process in the last lecture. And I suggested to you that when you have to take difficult decisions, a, a possible strategy is to split the complex decision in a sequence of uh, simpler decisions. And this can be done according to a procedure I told you that is uh, uh, the analytic hierarchy process, uh, and in particular through pairwise comparison. And I told you maybe that I take time to uh, propose to you an exercise. So, pairwise comparison, which is part of uh, the analytic hierarchy process, uh, is not uh, a topic uh, that I am uh, dealing with, uh, that I'm treating in the lectures. Uh, I'm uh, explaining how it works uh, in the exercises, uh, which means that it's not a subject for the exam. Okay? What I'm teaching today is not a subject for your exam in any period, I mean uh, not only for the first exam, but also for the subsequent ones. On the other hand, I think it is uh, something that is useful for you to give you an idea of how it works uh, and to show you the power of this decision support method. And then, if you're interested in the future, you know that there is this option. And uh, it's not the only one. There are several methods that can be used to assist a decision. I think this one is particularly interesting and it's also easy to find on the web supporting material and therefore let's make uh, this exercise. If uh, we are in time today, after the completion of this exercise, uh, I would like to go back to the iMod ray for an off model, to the application of iMod, because uh, we didn't calibrate the model. I gave to you the code for applying the model. But there is still the issue of parameter calibration, which is part of what is requested in the exercise, but we didn't have time to see how it can be done in R. And given that it's very quick, I decided to, to go back also to this. But let's start with pairwise comparison, and therefore let's click on this link, and let's see what is downloaded. Uh, it is downloaded a zip file. If you open it, there are two files inside, and there is in particular a PDF and a suggested R code. So let me just uh, um, put this file in a directory, and then uh, okay, let me see. 
set size. Of course, I made a spelling error. This is my file manager. And let me copy them in a directory. Let's look at the PDF. Okay. So let's have a look at it. A small hydropower plant with no regulation, so it's a run of the river, hydropower plant, is to be designed for a cross river section. The design flow can assume values of, and you see the five alternatives 80, 90, 100, 110, or 20, 120 liters per second. Remember, what does it mean in cubic meters per second? One cubic meter per second is equivalent to 1,000 liters per second. So this is a small hydropower plant indeed. Small, but still. I mean, 120 liter per second, it's, it's uh, something relevant. After a careful assessment of the environmental and economic, uh, economical is a mistake, it's economic, okay? Eco and it would be economic behavior of the project. The following indicators have been identified for evaluating the most appropriate alternative. So there are four indicators that we need to consider. What are indicators? Are ways, analytic ways, to measure a performance of the design. A performance uh, including uh, with the term under the term performance both negative and positive impacts so the, the indicators are the economic again there is a mistake benefit i1 because uh, i say that it's a mistake because i recently learned that economical means cheap and uh, if you want to say something relevant to economics it's economic okay and and uh, okay there was not uh, an agreement among the audience about that, uh, so it can be, uh, uh, but I think, uh, I browse on the web, I think the correct term is economic, I will, I will make a change of that. The impact on the fish community is the second indicator, I2. The impact on the landscape, I3. And the fruition of the downstream river reach for recreational purposes, I4. So you see that the first indicator is uh, an indicator that is expected to increase. The performance uh, is expected to increase with the increasing diverted flow, with increased design flow. Because of course, uh, the economic benefit is expected to increase with increasing flow. Not, not, it's not always like that, but we expect that. Okay? Not always because uh, of course, with increasing design flow, also the cost of the plant increases. But usually, when you design an hydropower plant, for an hydropower plant, usually, in under regular conditions, usual conditions, you have an increase of the benefit for increasing design flow. So this is what we are expecting, but of course we need to check it. The impact on the fish community of course, uh, it's uh, for increasing design flow is expected to increase the impact. So it is an indicator that tends to give preference to low design flow. So it's the opposite than the economic indicator. Impact on the landscape, the same thing, because uh, you know when you build uh, uh, an hydropower plant, uh, you have a visual impact. Uh, which uh, usually is expected to increase uh, with increasing design flow. The visual impact is not only given by the buildings uh, and the infrastructures that you need to build. It's also given by the fact that uh, if you reduce uh, the flow into the river, of course, visually, it has an impact on the landscape. You don't want a landscape with uh, a dry river if in natural condition the river is not dry. And then there is the fruition of the downstream river reach for recreational purposes. Same thing, the fruition is expected to decrease if the design flow increases. So of these four indicators, only the first one gives priority, is expected to give priority to high design flows. The other three ones are expected to give priority to low design flows. But of course, we have to decide what is the weight that we give to these indicators. 
because if we give a lot of weight to the first one, maybe that the overall evaluation is in favor of a high design flow. Conversely, if we give a low weight to the first one, it may happen the opposite. So there are two things that uh, we need to, to make here. The first thing is to define an analytic way to measure these indicators, to relate the value to give to each design flow a value for each indicator. So we need to establish an analytic structure. I say again, to each alternative, which means each design flow, we need to give a value, a numerical value, to each indicator. This is the first task. So we have to measure, the, find a way to measure these indicators for each alternative, for each design alternative. Good, this is the first thing. The second thing is to give weight to the indicators. And then, by combining the values of the indicators <coughs> through the weights, then we can give a score to each design alternative. This is what we are expected to do. So, to any alternative, an alternative is 80, 90, 100, 110, 120 design flow. To each alternative, we have to give an overall score, which is a combination through the weights of the values of the indicators. So, what is the first task? The first task, as I said, is to give a value to the indicators for each alternative. And in order to do that, an obvious solution would be for the first one to evaluate the economic benefit for each design flow and then we get a number which is quantifying the money in a given currency. For the other indicators the number will be computed in a different way but what is important as I already said last time is that these values of the indicators should be comparable. So if I use the currency as a measure for the first indicator, then it's in a scale that is given by the currency. The other indicators will have another scale. We have to rescale the indicators in order to make them comparable. And I said last time, a possibility is that the value of the economic benefit is rescaled in a range 0, 1. This is a possibility. So, I compute the mean benefit of the alternatives, the max benefit, and I interpolate these extremes between 0 and 1. This is a possibility, no? So, basically what I can do is... Uh, let's suppose that uh, my E1 in currency For the four alternatives, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, this is my design flow. This is my design flow. And then, sorry, I can compute E1 in terms of benefit in currency. And therefore, uh, it may be something like uh, this. Uh, Okay, just through an economic uh, analysis, I may find this uh, these values, uh, and this is in currency, so it's not varying from zero to one. Okay, what I could do is, uh, in a secondary axis, make the scaling. This is my secondary axis, so rescale E1 
I could give to the lowest the value 0, to the highest the value 1, in this rescaled secondary axis, and I may simply interpolate linearly. This is a possibility. And of course, you could say, yeah, but it's, uh, the linear interpolation is not uh, really interpreting in a good way the increase of benefit uh, with increasing design flow. Yes, I know, but this is still a possibility. Which is, of course, something that you have to decide. So it's up to you. The way to rescale the benefit it's up to the decision of the engineer. And of course, in a similar situation, I would tell you, yeah, linear interpolation is not a good idea. Just try to do something different. And uh, another possibility could be, I don't have, oh, yes, I have another call, a piecewise interpolation. This is another possibility. Which may be better? The way we rescale is carried out through what is called a utility function. So when we translate a benefit, an indicator in the range 0, 1, what the is built uh, is a utility function. What uh, is the purpose of a utility function? To associate to each design alternative a score between 0 and 1. So this is uh, utility functions. So sometimes I'm sure that you already heard this term. Sometimes you hear this term, a utility function. A utility function, a utility is expressed in the range 0, 1. And a utility function for any design alternative gives a score with respect to a given performance. In this case, it's the economic benefit. In fact, what you see here is in the following of the PDF, four utility functions, one per each indicator. So let's see what is the first one, the shape of the first one. The shape of the first one is a utility function that is given in terms of design flow, and it doesn't include any of the design flows that I'm considering here, but it's spanning the whole range. And the utility function says that if the design flow is zero, the utility is zero, for, of course, because it means uh, that there is no economic benefit, because there is no plant. If the design flow is up to 30 liters per second, uh, again, the utility is zero, because there is a minimum flow to justify an economic benefit. When you design a plant, if it is for one drop per second, you have no benefit. And here, the threshold for starting gaining a benefit is fixed in 30 liters per second. And then the utility function takes a linear growth from 30 liters per second to 150. And therefore, you see that it spans the full range of my alternatives, which is between 80 and 120. And it's linear. In this range, it's linear there is a linear increase. These utility functions are given, usually it's your task to determine them. Okay? Of course, I could have split between 30 and 150 if uh, I see that there is an increase that is not linear. In this case, let's take this increase linear. Is this clear? So this is a, a way to rescale that is given to you. It's not part of our exercise because, of course, you need an economic analysis in order to quantify it. Okay, and then let's look at the other utility functions for the other indicators. As I said, they are expected to give decreasing utility for increasing design flow. And in fact, this is what you find here. 
for the indicator I2, which is, uh, don't remember, I2 is uh, the impact on the fish community, we have the max utility, which means no impact, for the design flow equal to zero. And for a design flow up to 60, we don't have any impact. This is reasonable because fishes don't suffer much for any decrease of water. They suffer, they start suffering below a given threshold. And this threshold is fixed in 60 liters per second. Up to a withdrawal of 60 liters per second, they don't suffer. And then from 60 to 150, we have a linear decrease of the indicator. Okay, indicator I3, which is impact on the landscape, same thing, but the threshold for starting uh, to see a decrease in the utility is 100, and then linear decrease from 100 to 150. And uh, indicator I4, which is, uh, which is uh, fruition of downstream reach. Again, we have, uh, uh, here we have a, a decrease of the utility that starts quite soon. We have utility one up to 10 liters per second, but then if we increase, we get to utility zero to 100 liters per second. So this is an indicator that is quite penalizing the withdrawal of water. But again, these are things that are given. Of course, you may try what happens with different values of the utility function. Okay, now, given that the first step is already completed, it's given as part of the data, now we have to pass to the second task, which is give a weight to our indicators. Okay, at this stage, uh, we uh, we are done with uh, reading the text. 